Morning guys, it's Detrina from Blue Ridge Diva Design. And I'm back today to show you guys how to make the bracelet to go along with the earrings and rings that we've been working on in the Sweetheart Pearl set. And in order to start that, you're going to need some crystals or beads of your choice. I'll be using um, these 8 millimeter crystals with the AB finish. These are in yellow with a beautiful AB finish. And I'll also be using some 3 millimeter pearls and they're ivory colored. The original project um, which I showed in my earring and ring tutorials I had used the orange AB 8 millimeter crystal beads and some 60 silver lined crystal C beads, just size 60. And those are all 60 beads here. And here's the bracelet that we'll be working on today. Alright, guys, so I'm going to pause for just a moment and I'll be right back to um, get started. So now for this project, you'll also be needing a, I'm going to be using a size 12 beading needle because pearls are a little bit di more difficult to get through. Um, you'll also be needing a clasp and a jump ring of uh, your choice. I'm going to be using this um, beautiful antique bronze. And I'm going to be using a jump ring here and a jump ring here as well. All right. I've got my board laid out and I have my needle threaded. <coughs> what I want to do is get started. And I'm going to start here on the end of my bracelet. And I used wire protectors on this bracelet, but I'm not going to use them here because I have these pearls, which are going to be pr pretty protective of my thread. So what I did initially... I apologize, I dropped one of my pearls, is I'm going to go ahead and pick up enough beads to make a one right angle weave unit, so I'll be picking up four of my three millimeter pearls. Alright guys, so what I've done to start, I've threaded my needle, a 12 inch, uh, 12, size 12 beading needle, onto some six pound crystal fire line. I've picked up four pearls and I've got them down to the end of my bead, uh, my thread, and I'm going to leave myself a little bit of a tail but I'm adding my, going to be adding my class at the uh, beginning of my bracelet and then at the other end when I work my way down. So I'm just going to pass my needle back through the four beads that I just added which in this case are going to be my three millimeter pearls and on my previous example were uh, my 6OC beads. Then I'm going to pass my needle actually I'm going to go ahead and pass my needle up through the next two pearls to complete my circle in my red or uh, my white right angle weave unit. All right, so my tail thread is coming out down here, and I'm going to pass through one more pearl, so I'm at the opposite bead from my tail thread. And I'm going to be adding my jump ring on this end. So what I'm going to do is pick up an even number of pearls. And I'm going to use four. Now you can make as, use as many beads here as you want to add a jump ring or your lobster claw or uh, any type of other closure that you might want to use. I'm going to be using four and what I want to do is when I make everything secure, I want my jump ring to actually sit in between uh, two, of, two on each side of those pearls so that when my bracelet is laying flat, this jump ring is going to be in the middle of these beads. So I'm going to use an even number of beads. So I picked up four and I put my jump ring also onto my string. And I'm going to go ahead and pull my thread through. 
And as you can see, I've created a nice little loop here um, and with my jump ring in the center. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to simply pass back through my beads and my jump ring two more times. Make sure to go through the jump ring where you'll have an exposed thread. And I'm going to come back down these two beads, go back through the bead um, on my right angle weave unit as well. And pull. And this way, once I've passed through the second time, uh, I will have went three times through my uh, the end here with my jump rings. I'm going to go one more time. And this is why I used a size 12 beading needle to make sure I could get through these tiny pearls a third time. Now I'll have to pass through these last two pearls one more time as well as make sure the jump ring goes over the uh, under the, I mean, the needle goes under through the jump ring. Sorry, guys. And I'm going to come back through this bead on my original right angle weave unit one more time as well because that's the way my thread path goes. And so this is what I've gotten on the end. And I have a right angle weave unit here with my four beads. And then I have this little circular unit here. I'm using this shared bead off of the right angle weave plus four more beads. So it gives a total of five. But here at the top, I'll have two of my beads on this side and two of my beads on that side. So when I connect my lobster claw at the end, when I want to wear the bracelet, it will sit nicely in the center of those beads here, just like that. And I'm hoping that you guys are actually even seeing any of this. <laughs> Okay, so this is where I'm at. I've reinforced this little loop that I made. And I apologize, but when I was making this loop where I've added the jump ring in, all I did was I put the four beads on and the jump ring, and I came back through the bead that my thread, working thread was coming out of in the opposite direction, and I came through that each time I reinforced through the beads and the jump ring, I came back through the same bead here, and... Uh, went through the third time and did the exact same thing. I came back through this initial bead here where my thread was coming out of my original right angle weave unit. So now I'm coming out there, but I need to be coming out down here so I can start uh, adding my length to my bracelet. So what I'm going to do is just work my thread around through the beads of my right angle weave unit. And I'm just twist, turn my work over so I can work in this direction as I'm left-handed. So I'm coming out to the left of that bead closest to my loop with my jump ring. I'll pass my needle upwards through the three millimeter pearl on the left and pull my thread and then pass through also this bead here on the opposite side from left to right in my instance uh, to be in the center bead of that right angle weave unit on the side that I'm going to be adding my bracelet length. And I'm just going to pull my thread through and flip my beads around. Flip my bead work. So once again, I'm working from the left hand side. All right. So now this bead here is going to be the bottom bead of my circular formation around my bigger crystal and just like I did on the earrings and ring tutorial I'm going to show you guys how I how I work this so everything always looks uniform and nice I'm going to go ahead and pick up my crystal and one more of my three millimeter pearls and I'm going to drop that all the way down to my beadwork And this is what I have now. Um, I have my tail thread down here, kind of getting in my way, but that's okay. Um, this pearl is sitting on top of the crystal, and here's the rest of my beadwork. Now, I'm going to take my needle, and I'm going to skip over the pearl, and I'm going to come right straight back down through only the crystal, in this instance, and pull my thread through. And 
and then I'm going to pull it really snugly uh, so that uh, there's no gaps between my crystal and my pearls on either end. Now, when I give my work just a little bit of a jiggle, the bead, the crystal flops to this side. So I know that I came out, my working thread was coming out of that side of the bead. So I wanted to make a thread on this side, so I'm going to go back through this pearl from left to right here uh, to create another thread on both sides of this pearl going up through that crystal, if that makes sense. I hope it does. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull my thread through. And now I'm coming out of my pearl. And that is exactly what I need for um, to be, where I need to be coming out. Hold on just a second, guys. I'm having a little problem with my thread. All right. Now everything is nice and secure. And the crystal is situated without gaps. And there's a pearl here and a pearl here. And those are the two pearls I'll be working with to create the little circular formation. Now I know from, you know, creating the earrings in the ring already with these exact beads that I need five pearls. And I showed in this uh, Sweetheart Pearl Ring and Earrings tutorial how you would measure if you're using different size beads than um, I'm using here in this demonstration. Uh, what you simply do, I'll show one more time just because you may not want to make the earrings in the ring. I don't really know. I'm going to drop those beads down that I picked up and I'm going to take my fingernail and hold it up against this last bead on my working thread here and what I'll do is I'm going to bend it around and make sure that it fits around the bead just like this without leaving a big gap in here and that way I know that my uh, circle is going to look really nice and professional looking now I'm coming out on the left hand side so I'm going to go through this bead pearl sitting at the top of my crystal from left to right and pull my thread and you guys probably know that I'm working with a long thread and when I do you'll see that by measuring I've, ma I've made sure that my pearls or, or beads whatever sitting around my bigger bead are nice and secure they're snugged up tightly to this bigger bead and there's no gaps and everything looks really really nice and really professional and so at this point I'm going to go ahead and create my next connection on the top of this uh, 8 millimeter for my next unit before I finish off this circle. And what that does is uh, I could go ahead and work my way back around the circle, but I like to do it this way because it seems to make everything feel a little tighter, a little less loosely uh, where it can actually give way and cause a sag in your thread. So I do it this way and you by no means have to. Now I'm going to make a right angle weave unit but this bead counts as one so I only have to pick up three. I'm coming out to the right with my working thread so I'm going to pass my needle from left to right right back through that same bead and pull my thread and give a nice snug pull there. You see now I've created my next connection but I'm still in position coming out of this pearl to finish my circle of pearls around my 8 millimeter. So what I'll need to do now is pick up my other five pearls. And these pearls are a little hard to pick up, but they sure are beautiful. All right, so now I have my five pearls on my thread. And my working thread, because I flipped my work, is coming out here to the left. So I'm going to come around to this pearl at the bottom of my crystal, which is part of that original right angle weave unit, and I'm going to pass through from left to right to bring my other five pearls down around my bigger bead. Okay, so I apologize guys, I had bumped my camera, and I'm glad that I looked before I completed uh, any more of my bracelet. However, all I've done is worked from when I added my last beads, and I was coming out down here at the bottom of my pearl uh, enclosure on this bottom bead of my right angle weave unit, 
I brought those five beads around and went through this purl. Then I just worked my needle up through the five beads here on the side as well. Worked my thread weight, following the thread path up through those pearls. Then into the bottom of this right angle weave unit, this pearl here at the top of my crystal bead. And then I took my needle and worked up through this bead on the left hand side this way. And then through the top bead on the right this way. So once I got my five beads in position, I just followed around with my needle and went up through all these pearls including the one at the top of my crystal, up through this pearl on the side of my right angle weave, and then across the top. So now I'm sitting here ready to add my next crystal. And so in order to do that, you'll see my thread's coming out to the right, and it doesn't really matter which way you hold your work, right or left. All you'll do now is we're going to repeat the exact same steps. I'm just going to go through it with you guys one more time. We'll pick up a crystal and one of our pearls or one of our smaller seed beads, whichever you're using. I'm going to bring those down to the bottom of my beadwork, just like I did when I added the first one. I'm going to let those drop all the way down and sit up against the pearl here on the right angle weave unit. I'm going to take my needle and skip this pearl and come right back down through my crystal in the opposite direction of where my working thread is coming out to position that pearl on top of that crystal. And if your work gets a little loose, it's really easy to fix. You just hold on to the pearl and pull your thread. And that brings everything down nice and snug and secure. Now my thread was coming out to the right and I'm going to pass my needle and create this thread bridge again, once again, on this side here to go in through left to right through the pearl. And I'm creating, what that does is create a thread bridge on both sides of that right angle weave pearl just like that and it gets you into position it centers your bead up nicely your centered focal bead here which is our eightos and puts you into position to add your first side of beads I'm just going to flip it over and pick up my five pearls simply just like I did on the first one I'll get five pearls on my needle. All right. Now I'm coming out here, or because I flipped my work, I'm coming out on the left. I am going to take my needle and pass through this pearl sitting on the top of this crystal from left to right. Pearl my, pull my five pearls into position. Oops. Just like that. And then I'm going to create my next right angle weave unit one more time. And you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to, but I prefer it. Just feels like it gives me a little extra tension to um, keep everything from loosening up around my beads. So now I'm coming out to the right through my top pearl. So I'll take my three pearls past my needle from the opposite side left to right to create that little right angle weave pull the thread through pull it nice and snug as we did before to make sure we don't have any play in here and pick up the next five pearls for the opposite uh, side of my crystal Oops. Sometimes I just send little pearls flying all over. All right, so now I have five pearls. I'm coming out here on the right hand side of that bead, the pearl at the top of my unit. So I'm going to come through my bottom bead um, off of this uh, right angle weave unit here, sitting at the bottom of my crystal, and pass through from the right to the left. And give a nice tug, a nice pull, and pull everything through, and then pull everything nice and snug. And so I've created my next little circle of uh, pearls around my crystal. And you can see it's still a little bit loose, but I'm going to work my way up. I'm coming out on the left, so I'm going to go up through the five pearls here on the left. 
you know, I can only get through a few at a time with these pearls, so I just take my time and pull snug each time I get through uh, my, whatever amount I can get through on my pass. I'll go through the last two I just added on the side of that um, crystal, and then I'll have to go through the one more. We'll have to go through this one here, which is the bottom bead of my next right angle weave unit. So I can work, follow my thread path and work my way up through this unit to add my next crystal. So I went through the pearl of the, the bottom one. I'm going to turn my work over. And I'm going to go up through this one here on the left. Pulling nice and snug each, each step. And then, of course, I'll just go across this bead here from left to right. Josie, shh, shh, shh. Sorry, guys. That's my little chihuahua. Shh, shh, shh. And then I'm in position, coming out on the right-hand side here of this uh, top bead of that connecting right angle weave unit in order to add my next crystal by just picking up a crystal and a pearl, bringing them down, and doing the exact same steps we've done to create this uh, look so far. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue working by adding my crystal and pearl, coming around, accentuating my crystal on one side, creating my unit, accentuating the other side, working back up and working through into my connection unit and keep on moving forward till I get to the desired length that I need. And then I'll be back to show you guys how to finish off your bracelet. Okay. All right. Hi guys. So now I'm back and I've completed the length of my bracelet. And just as I suspected, I needed to add an extra unit um, onto my beadwork. So, whereas in this sample, using the 60 seed beads and the 8 millimeter rounds, I had only needed to make 8 units uh, of my, you know, bead, larger beads. On this bracelet, I've actually used, had to add 9. So, I've created my 9 units. And I've worked my way up through my last right angle weave unit here at this end of my beadwork. This is the end with my uh, jump ring and the loop already created. Here's the other end. Now, I've went ahead and strung onto my needle the um, exact same amount of beads that I used on the opposite end of my beadwork. So I've put on four pearls and I put on my lobster claw clasp with a jump ring. So my jump ring was already connected here to my lobster claw. If you don't want to do that, you would put on half of your beads, then you would just simply go through this tiny little hole here on your actual lobster claw without the jump ring, and then put the other half of your pearls on. So that would have been two pearls, the lobster claw, and two pearls. But because I'm using a jump ring, it doesn't matter. I can go ahead and add them all at the same time. Now. My thread is coming out here to the left of my last pearl on the top of my uh, final unit of right angle weave. So I'm just going to pass my needle with my pearls and my lobster claw it, through the jump ring, clasp end, back through this pearl I'm coming out of from the opposite side, and pull it across to create my little loop. And it's got my little closure sitting in there, just like that. So now all I'm going to do uh, to finish this off is the same exact thing I did on the other end of my bracelet, is I'm going to reinforce this two more times. So I'm just going to pass up through, I'm coming out to the left of this pearl on my right angle weave. I'm going to go up through these two pearls on the left hand side of my closure loop. Pull my thread through. it nice and snug. Then I'm going to go through the next, the jump ring and the next two pearls on the right hand side. I only made it through my jump ring and one pearl. And get through my other pearl. And pull my work. Sorry guys, I got a little hung up here. I'm not sure what I did. and pull nice and snug. 
Now I need to pass back through this pearl that's on my uh, right angle weave unit here. So I'm going to come back through it. I'm coming, I'm on the right hand side, so I'll go in the right hand side towards the left. And I'm pulling really snug. All right, now I'm going to go at least one more time. So I'm going to go back up through the two pearls on the left. Through my jump ring. And down through the two pearls on the right, back towards my beadwork. And pull. And so I'm down here and I need to come back through this pearl that's at the top of that right angle weave unit to close the gap. And pull everything really nice and snug. Okay, so I've went through that closure three times just like I did on this end of my beadwork. And there I have my beautiful little bracelet. So now I just want to get rid of my thread, so I'm just going to do some half inch knots. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do those down close to my crystals and not close to my pearls. Uh, just in case my pearls are getting, you know, a little bit full of thread because they are relatively small. So I'm coming out the left of this pearl here. I'm going to go down the bead on the left in the right angle weave unit, the last unit, my bracelet. And I'm going to cross through this uh, bead here at the bottom of that right angle weave unit that's sitting right here on my crystal. And I'm, my, tel my working thread's on the left, so I'm going to go in through the left side of that bead and come out on the right side of that bead. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tie a half inch knot here. I'm going to pass my needle. Let me make sure you guys can see what I'm doing really good. I'm going to take my needle and go up under this thread, sitting between the right angle weave unit and the bead next to it, which is part of this circle here. So I'm going to come up through under the thread, and I'm going to pull slowly, and you form that little loop, and this nice little loop here. I'm going to take my needle and go through that loop. And I'm going to pull slowly till I get my thread pulled uh, pretty close to where it's going to snug down into my half inch knot. And now I'm just going to pull it, making sure that my thread stays in between those two pearls. I'm just going to continue to pull it down until it snugs up against my thread, my original thread, and I've made a half inch knot. So now I want to work down and do a couple more. So at this point I could go down through my crystal or down through my pearls on the side. My pearls seem a little loose right here, so I'm going to go down through the side of my pearls, my side pearls, and just work through them a few at a time if I have to. There's three. Make sure you don't get your thread hung around your clasp like I just um, almost did. Now I've got to go through two more, and that'll be all the beads on the side of my, um, all the pearls on the side of my bigger bead. And I'm going to do a half hitch knot here. Um, once again, I'm close to my crystal. I haven't went through this bead yet, but I'm going to once I do my half hitch knot. So once again, I'm just going to go up under the thread there. I'm going to rub my needle along the crystal to catch the thread between the pearls and um, the crystal. And just pull it nice and slow, make myself a nice little loop. And you'll see how I hold my fingernail when I do this part so that I kind of can keep my thread exactly where, I'm, where I want it to be. My loop stays where I want it to be so that I don't run into a dangerous situation of making an exposed thread. All right, so now I'm coming up. I've got my loop, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull it nice and slow and snug right there. And now my thread sucked in, my little half inch knot sucked in between those two pearls where my working thread was sitting. So now I'm going to come through that pearl that's part of the right angle weave unit between the two crystals here. Following my thread path. 
and now I'm over here on this side so I flip my work and I'm sitting right here on this side of my right angle weave unit. I'm going to do one more half inch knot so I'll come down the bead on the left in my right angle weave. This time I'm going to go ahead and cross through the bottom bead that's on my right angle weave from left to right because that's the side my working thread's coming out on. Bear with me just a moment because it's a little tight in there. And I'm through the, that one purl only. My thread pull through. And here's where I'm sitting. And I'm sitting in this spot like that I was up here when I did my first half hitch knot between this purl that's part of my right angle weave unit and this first purl on the right hand side of my five purls going around the crystal. So I'm going to move that bead over just a little with my fingernail and go back under that thread just like I did on my first half hitch knot. I pull nice and slow to get my loop created. I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to go through the inside of that loop. And once again, I'm going to pull nice and slow. And make sure that my thread is sucking in between those two beads where my uh, working thread was initially coming out. And there we go. And there's my last half hitch knot. And so you don't want to cut your thread uh, right on top of your knot. So just work yourself down through a few more of your pearls here on the same side uh, that your working thread was coming out. I'm going to go ahead and go down through all the pearls and this bead here on the right angle weave. I like to try to cut my thread off in the center of the work. So I've got those last three pearls in the loop I've went through. And I'm going to pass through this bead on the right angle weave unit. And then I'm just going to cut my thread. And there we have it. And my bracelet is done. I, uh, on this end, I've left enough tail thread that I can thread a needle on and weave around, make some half inch knots, and cut it off just like I did on this end. So you just put a needle on your thread here. Do some half inch knots as you sew down through and snip your thread off. And there you go. And that's it. And there's the beautiful little sweetheart pearl neck bracelet um, that matches the ring. And the earrings um, that I created in the other two videos. Alright, so the next project I do on this line is going to be a necklace to match this whole set. Um, it'll probably be a little bit before I get around to the necklace because I've got a lot of other projects that I've got laid out and already started that I want to show you guys how to do. So uh, if you like this video, please click like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for, for more interesting uh, full project tutorials and step-by-step -step illustrations on how to do the different techniques in jewelry making. We'll, and now we'll be doing um, more than just bead weaving, promise you guys. And... Uh, Go ahead and click over to my Facebook page, which is Blue Ridge Diva Designs. Um, go ahead and like my page there. And then I have a group, which is Blue Ridge Diva Designs, fun and extra stuff, where you guys, if you join the group, you can post pictures of your beadwork and um, projects that you're working on. Give me any comments that you have. Feel free to comment here on this video as well. I want to thank you guys for watching so much. I really appreciate your patience as I'm learning how to do these tutorials. And um, thank you for all the wonderful feedback that you've been providing. You guys have a great day and happy beading.